Romans the 12th chapter verse 2 says it like this. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm going to stop right there. And I want to just talk to you real briefly this morning about there's perfection in the purpose. There is perfection in the purpose. Father God, we just want to thank you right now for this opportunity to be here in your house. Father, we just give your name all the honor, glory, and the praise, and we thank you for what you've already done and what you're getting ready to do, Father God. So now, Father God, we're giving you free reign in this place, Father God, to have your holy way. Remove us out of ourselves, Father God, that we will be able to hear your word, Father God. That it may be able to penetrate, Father God, even in the hearts of man right now, Father God. That every man, woman, and child under the sound of my voice, Father God, will hear your word. That they not will hear it from me, Father God, but that you will use me as a vessel, Father God, to simply say what you will have me to say, Father God. Father, we're praying for traveling mercies for those who may be on the way. And for those who are here now, Father God, we're asking for your Holy Ghost covering, Father God, for every situation, for every test, for every trial, whatever the situation may be, Father God, we're giving you the glory and honor in it right now. We're giving you the praise and counting it already done and saying that it's already better, that it's already going to work itself out, Father God, because you have your hand on the situation. And right now, Father God, we're giving you praise for this service and we're giving you honor. We're giving you glory in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. 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 There is perfection in the purpose. When you think about purpose, the word purpose is defined as the reason for which something is done or created or for something to exist. Now, for us, when we live our lives, we go through lives, we understand that as Christian men and women, we understand that we were created by God. So I say amen. amen. There is a reason for your creation. There is a reason that God created us. Somebody say there's a purpose. There's a purpose. There is a purpose that God created us. And our topic this morning is there's perfection in the purpose. So what I need you to understand before we even get, uh, get started in anything, before we say anything, before we hoop, holler, shout, amen, we need to first understand that the reason that we're sitting here this morning is simply because God has a purpose for each and every one of us. There is a reason for your very existence. Mm -hmm. There is a reason that you are still here. Somebody say purpose. purpose. There's a reason for this. And if God has a purpose, if God has a reason for you being here, then he must have a plan for you. If God has a purpose for you and he has a plan for you, there must be an outline for your life. There must be a blueprint, a strategy that has already been put into place for your individual life if you are still here. Somebody say purpose. purpose. Because he, talking about God, the creator, had to make a choice in whether or not he created you or not. See, people don't look at it that way. Everybody just assume that it's okay to wake up in the morning, stretch, yawn, know, cuss everybody out mad because you're on the way to work and you late. Oh, I'm just talking about me mad because you didn't go to sleep last night when you were supposed to mad because you didn't get up when your alarm clock went off. But we just assume that the day is just supposed to go the way that it's supposed to go. But we don't understand that it was not by our doing, but it was a choice that God made when he woke you up this morning. When he woke you up yesterday morning, when he woke you up last week, when he woke you up last year, understand that there was a purpose, that there's a plan in place when God decides to do a thing in your life. We must understand that there must be a purpose for me, there must be a purpose for you, there has to be a purpose because we're still here. In order for God to keep us here, in order for God to keep us in existence, remember the definition for purpose means that there's a reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. So if there's an existence, if you are existing, then there must be a demand for your life. There must be a demand for the purpose and the call that God has placed on your life. Because if there were not a demand for, you know what they do when stuff is not in demand? They get rid of it. They do away with it. They don't need it anymore. But if God saw fit to keep you, if God saw yes. fit to keep you in existence, there must be a purpose on your life. Right. Understand this. When it comes to purpose, there is a plan. Mm -hmm. Somebody say there's a plan. There's a plan. there's a plan in place. And because God is such a great planner, because he's so good at planning things out, he had to plan out your very creation. He planned out his purpose for you. The scripture that we read just said to be not conformed to this world. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do we know about this world? 
If we don't know nothing else, we know that this world operates differently from the way that God would intend for the world to operate. If we don't know nothing else, we know that this world conflicts with the very things that God has put in place, with the order that God has put in place. And when it comes to the world, when it comes to the people of the world, the people in the world, oftentimes the world conflicts with God. Understand that the scripture, the Bible, the Holy Scripture that God has given us lays out the blueprint of what God will have the order to be. But the world that we live in don't operate in the order that God has already laid out. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. From experience, we all know that the world responds and operates differently than God's plan is because God's plan is perfect. Because God's plan is in place for perfection. Remember, our topic there is perfection in the purpose but the world does not operate in purpose the world is no longer operating under the order that god has already set because the order that god has already set has a reason behind it it has a goal behind it it has a very achievable purpose behind it but the world does not operate or does not plan things out the way that god does because when god sets a plan in place there's a purpose the world has set a plan in place with no purpose. Yeah. We're just going to make it up right. as we go. We'll figure it out as we go along. See, that's why folks get upset when you try to lay down order. Because folks so used to just jumping in, doing stuff how they want to do it, when they want to do it, and we'll figure it out along the way. Then when everything falls apart, everybody got to point the finger at somebody else because nobody laid down the order. Because there was no purpose, there was no vision, there was no focal point. And we just trying to figure it out, feel our way through it. The saying is you can fake it till you make it. But if you ain't got nowhere to make it to, how we gonna fake or make anything? There's no focal point. So when God lays down an order, he has a purpose in place first before he lays down the plan. Somebody say amen. 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 It's getting good. Now I'm teaching real good now. See, God operates based off purpose. The reason for which something is done, created, or that something exists is because of a purpose. So unless God has a purpose, a reason, he wouldn't have created you. He wouldn't have created you. He wouldn't have put you in place. So this, his purpose includes people. It includes our lives. It includes our situations. It includes our circumstance because God operates only on purpose. So when he began to lay down the plan for your life, because of the purpose that he had already intended for you when he had the purpose in place to create you he had already mapped out everything that would take place in your life he had already mapped out every situation that you would go through he had already outlined every circumstance that you would go through he had already laid out all your good days all your bad days all your hills you can't climb. I feel like singing the I, some, I can't do it good days but you know he had already laid all this stuff out because he had to incorporate all of that in your life because he understood that there was a purpose that you had to get to. There was a purpose that your life would fulfill but all these things that you had to go through, he had to make sure that first the purpose was in place so when all these circumstances and situations came about, they would not derail you from getting to the purpose that he had already put in you. The purpose that he had already laid out for your life, he had to make sure that though you would go through trials and tribulation your purpose was still there. That is why he keeps you in your very existence. That is why he keeps us when we want to give up. That is why he keeps us when we want to throw in the towel. That's why he keeps us when we don't want to get out of bed in the morning. That's why he keeps us when we got a headache, backache, knee ache, all kind of pain running through our body. That's why he keeps us when we laying on the operating table. That's why he keeps us when we ready to cuss, cut everybody out on our job. That's why he keeps us. Because there is purpose in you. There is a focal point. There is something that you need to get to. There's something that you need to get done. And because you have circumstances and situations, God had already mapped that out. He said, it's going to be hard to go through. It's going to be hard for you to get over this. But I have a purpose for you. Therefore, I'll keep you in all that you're going through. I'll keep you in all your tears. I'll keep you in all your fears. I'll keep you in your sleepless nights. I'll keep you when you don't want to go on living no more. But I will make a way for you because I... I have a purpose already laid out for you. It's getting good now. It's getting good now. God will incorporate all these things in his plan and his purpose for us. The scripture has said that we are not to conform to this world. In this world, the world that we live in, man 
mankind has already laid out a way of doing things that is contrary to the way that God does things. Man has his own plan in place. But see, the thing about men, we not good planners. We can't plan a party. We can't plan a schedule. We can't budget correctly. We can't set the alarm clock at the correct time to get up to get where we need to be. We can't get to places on time. We can't leave on time. We not good at planning at all because when it comes to our plans, we'll mess stuff up. Every time. Even when we get out on time, we not really on time. Even when we get to a place on time, we not really on time because you in the parking lot at 8 o'clock, but you supposed to be clocking in at 8. See, we, we on time, but we ain't really on time. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're mad at me now. Okay, so in our planning, we'll mess stuff up because we ain't good planners. Here's the crazy part. We're not realistic planners because we don't put things into place and we don't account for things messing up our schedule. We plan to get a certain place at a certain time. And we know, according to GPS, it takes 10 minutes to get over here. But we didn't plan on traffic. We didn't plan on our car stalling. We didn't plan on, oh, man, I was supposed to get gas two, three days ago. I'm riding on fumes right now. I don't even know if I got 10 minutes worth of driving in my car. But see, we don't plan realistically. That's why we mess things up. But when God plans a thing, God incorporates in his plan situations, circumstances, things that we don't plan on, obstacles, anything that may get in the way. God plans around these things so that even if something gets in the way of the plan, now the plan is to go straight towards the purpose. But if something should have to get in the road and cause us to detour, God has already planned the detour route. So that even though we're not taking the straight road to the purpose, we may have to turn left, turn right, go around the corner, circle the block one or two, three times, but God will still get us to the purpose. Yeah. Kind of like your GPS, it'll say it's rerouting. It's taking you to the purpose. It's just not going the way to plan A. It's not going the first route that we came up with because now the first route has an accident. The first route has traffic. So what your GPS will do, it will reroute you. It'll say you are on the fastest route to get to your destination. But now if something happens and gets in the way of your routes, it will reroute you. God, when he plans things out, already has put the reroute in your plan, All right. in your purpose, and what he has planned out for you. Because remember, we're not good planners because we don't plan realistically. Right. The problem with us is we're scared to keep it real with ourselves, yeah. not keep it real with everybody else. We can't keep it real with ourselves. The saying is keep it 100. But if you keep it at 72 with yourself, how you going to keep it 100 with everybody? Okay. I'm just, I'm just being honest. So the problem is, because we're not good planners, because we don't operate on order, without purpose, God will not use us to create or God cannot use us to do the things that he needs us to do. So here's the thing. God would never create us if there was never purpose. Yeah, right. So we know that there's purpose because we're still here. Yeah. The problem is, is that sometimes folk don't want to really admit that we the problem that's in the way of getting to the purpose. Yeah. We are the obstacle. Yeah. We are the detour. We are the issues that are getting in the way to getting to where God wants us to be. Yeah. The problem with us is that we're not good planners. See, we don't have no vision. We don't have no focal point. We operating based off emotions, based off feelings. But what God does and his plan, and he operates and he plans realistically. So God has more than one plan in place. Uh-huh. Watch this. It's getting good. He has more than one plan in place. See, a lot of us plan for plan A. A lot of us don't like to incorporate plan B. See, plan B is your backup. Just in case something was to happen, just in case I got off course, I need a plan B. But the problem with plan B is is that a lot of us come up with plan B on the spot. God has plan B in place even when he incorporates plan A. So the problem is is that because we're not such good planners, but God is such a great planner. Even though there's a plan B, some cases plan C, D, elemental P. Sometimes there's so many plans... In place, but see, understand God is such a great planner that even though there are options in the plan, every plan still has the same amount of research, every plan has the same amount of time, every plan has the same amount of anointing. God does not make more than one plan, and then one plan be less than the other. 
every plan has a hundred percent of God in it because when he plans your purpose, even though you have more than one option, none of the options are generic. Yeah. You can write that down and you know that's real good. None of his options are generic. Every plan has the same amount of God in it. But see, when we plan, when we make plan B, Plan B ain't as thought out as plan A. Uh -huh. Plan C ain't got no thought in it. We just gonna go with the flow. We just gonna see where this road takes us. We gonna figure it out as we get there because see, we don't put as much effort into the other plans mm -hmm. as we do the first plan. Mm -hmm. So what happens if the first plan fails? We just floating in the wind. We don't know what's going on. We trying to figure it out as we go. But God is such a good planner. Mm -hmm. Because when he created us in purpose, he understood that there was going to be some things that got in our way. Yes, he understood we was going to have some stumbling blocks. Mm -hmm. He understood there was some things that were going to come to tempt us, come to try us. And because he's such a good planner, he said when you resort from plan A and go to plan B, plan B will still get you to the purpose. Yes. Plan C will still get you to the purpose. So it don't matter which route you take. One may take you longer than the other, but the plan is still going to get you to the purpose. Yes, Tell your neighbor, we talking about purpose. Uh, Still talking about purpose. Okay, so understand this. And God being such a good planner, he operates differently from the world. See, our plan, the world's plan, will guarantee you to fail, fall apart, crumble at any moment. But when God plans a thing, because he has purpose in place, he is planning this thing out and including every situation, every circumstance, every possible thing that could happen. He's already laid it out so that we still can reach the purpose. When it comes to the scripture. The scripture is telling us not to conform. The word conform means that we're not to comply or to become familiar with what is considered to be acceptable. In dealing with the world, we, if we're not conforming or not to become compliant or to become acceptable or familiar with the ways of the world, because remember, the world operates differently than the way God does. So, but here's the thing, that's so much easier said than done. Because we're so familiar with the world because that's what we see. That's what we hear That's what we're around in our communities in our workplace. That's what we get used to So it's hard to be unfamiliar with something that we see and hear every day But the problem is is that when we're coming familiar with the world We're surrounding ourselves with something that is not like God something that is ungodly something that does not have God's purpose and anything that is concerned or considered to be worldly or ungodly has now become the norm. Mm -hmm. And because it's normal, people feel like it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to convert, to act like the world, be like the world, talk like the world, be different than what God has intended us to be. But watch this, if you're different than what God has intended you to be, mm -hmm. then you're not living your purpose. Mm -hmm. You're not walking in your purpose. Mm -hmm. Because when he created you, he created you with what? purpose. So then if you're doing something differently than what he created you to be, if you're acting differently, if you're conforming to something that is different than God, then no longer can we be involved in the purpose. We've actually taken ourselves out of the purpose. But see, here's the thing about God. If we're not conformed, if we're not comfortable with the way of the world, if we're not accepting the norm, don't let accepting or being part of the norm replace your purpose. Right. Don't let what you see, what you hear, what seems to be the norm compare or replace what is considered to be your purpose in life. Because watch it, the thing about purpose is purpose is different for everybody. Yes, everybody has a purpose in their life. So what you're going through. What you're dealing with is different from what everybody else is dealing with. You may go through some similar things, but your individual purpose is going to be different from everybody else. So your path is going to be different from everybody else. That's why we can't conform to what seems normal, because if everybody doing the same thing, we can't be living purpose. Because everybody ain't got the same purpose. We all are in the kingdom. We all are working towards a goal in the kingdom, but everybody has a different Avenue. Everybody has a different purpose. Everybody has a different thing that they need to be doing in the kingdom. And if everybody doing the same thing, that means somebody's purpose has been laid down. Yeah. Somebody's purpose is not being fulfilled. So if somebody's purpose is not being fulfilled, then the kingdom is void. The kingdom is losing out on some things because everybody has a gift. Everybody has a talent. Everybody has a duty that they're supposed to be doing in the kingdom. And if ain't nobody feeling a if everybody's not fulfilling their purpose, something is missing. When we begin to conform to the normal things, to the worldly things, a lifestyle that has no purpose, we go into these situations and we keep running into dead ends. You ever been driving down the street not knowing where you're going? Yeah. And you say, this looks like the right way, so I'm going to turn down here. Okay. 
and it's a dead end. So now you got to turn back around. Better yet, you've been driving somewhere and you ain't got no GPS, no map. You ain't talked to nobody. You ain't asked nobody for directions, especially men. We think we know everything, how to get everywhere. And you've been driving for 45 minutes, an hour, and then somebody finally realized that, you know what, I'm going the wrong direction. Now I'm mad because I got to turn around, backtrack 45 minutes, an hour. I could have been where I was trying to go if I had some direction. But see, the thing about us, when we don't have no purpose, we just driving around. We just walking blind. We just bumping in the dead ends. We don't know where we going, how we going to get there. And then when somebody finally give us a clue that we're going the wrong direction, we mad at them because they brought to our attention that we're doing the wrong thing. But if we was fulfilling purpose, if we was on course, if we was sticking to the plan that God had already laid out, we could have avoided some of these dead ends that we could run into. We could have avoided some of these headaches, avoided some of this stress, avoided some of these stressful late nights, all, all night crying, going through all the stuff we're going through. A lot of this stuff could have been avoided had we stayed on purpose. The problem with us is, is that we become conformed to a lifestyle that seems like the norm. Okay, okay. And a lot of us don't think so. But here's my example. If you've ever been around a smoker, and you're not a smoker, you don't have to take a puff of the cigarette. But when you leave and you go somewhere else, you smell like smoke. Now they don't know that you don't smoke, but because you've been around a smoker, you smell like smoke. When you're around the world, and you begin to conform of the ways of the world, you might not have participated 100%, but because you was there, because you was in the environment, when you go somewhere else, yep, yep. you look like, right. you smell like. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. Somebody get mad right now. But see, the problem with, with the conversion is that we think it's okay to hang out in the world. But then we want to show back up on Sunday like everything all right because we done changed clothes. But the clothes smell like. Say that. The clothes have a aroma of what we've been around. See, 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 the thing is, like, all my clubs, if you used to go to the club, the club had a certain odor. It had a certain smell. So when you leave the club, and if you ain't changed clothes, if you ain't took a good shower, you smell like, you seem like, you've been in the club. Nah, I ain't been, nah, I was at work all night long. I worked third shift. No, you was at the club because you smell like Hennessy, Jack Daniels. You smell like... Okay, I'm sorry. Pray for him, pray for him. Okay, so the conversion takes place when we decide to hang out with the world. But there is a purpose. Somebody say there's a purpose. According to the scripture, it says, let us not conform to this world. But, there's a but. But, somebody say but. But, it's suggesting that there's something different getting ready to happen. But it's suggesting that there is something getting ready to change in the situation. The scripture tells us that there's something different that can take place. That there's a different meaning to what's getting ready to take place. And the scripture says that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. The word transform is meaning to make something different. To make a thorough or drastic change. Understand this. That when you are accepting the norm, life in the world is threatening your purpose life in the world is literally threatening to kill your purpose because how many of us know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that went somewhere hung out with somebody that ain't had no business being there and not only was the purpose killed but the purpose the person was taken out of here innocent bystander wrong place at the wrong time all these kind of scenarios they got but see here's the thing when it comes to purpose if we're in the purpose of God, if we're in the plan of God, he will make a way to keep us. Yes. Even when we being hard hit. Yes. Even when we trying to get out of the purpose. Anybody ever tried to get out of the purpose? You ain't going to be honest. That's okay. I know people that try to get out of the purpose. Talking about me. When you try to get out of the purpose, God has a way of reaching out and pulling you back in. And saying, you can't get away from this if you wanted to. Because I have already crafted you. I have already shaped you. When I created you, I had purpose in mind for you. So I refuse to let you get off course. I refuse to let you go down this path. I refuse to let you suffer in a way that's going to take you away from purpose. I may allow you to sit for a while. 
why I may allow you to go through some things, but when it gets too tough, when I feel like you're getting ready to be taken off course, I will reach in and pull you back on track. I will reach in and get you back in line with my purpose because when it comes to purpose, God has already put a plan in place to make sure that we stay on course. God's purpose for your life includes supernatural favor. That's why we can't figure out how we got out of some of the stuff that we got out of. That's why we can't figure out why we didn't fall short when we should have fell short. Why we didn't lay down and die when we should have laid down and died. Why it didn't turn out the way that it should have turned out. Because God's plan has supernatural favor over us. The world can only give you an imitation version of purpose. The world can only give you a figment of your imagination when it comes to purpose. Because the purpose belongs to God and God alone. Because there's perfection in his purpose. There's no flaws. There's no mistakes. When God has a purpose in place, God's purpose will never fail, never run short, never run out. Because God's purpose is is destined specifically for your life. Put in your purpose. In God mm-hmm. puts you in a place where the enemy will try to pollute you, mm-hmm. try to taint you, mm-hmm. try to get you off course. Okay. Because when God's purpose is in play, when his plan is in play, every obstacle that can come your way is coming. Mm-hmm. Every situation that can come your way is coming. Oh, yes, sir. It's kind of like you riding down the road and throw the trash out of the car. Yes, and they trash fall in your lane and then it fly and it blow up and it hit your car and it hit the car next to them and it hit the other car. Yeah. We riding out 85, they got all this stuff in the road and it just be bouncing from car to car because everybody hitting it and riding by it and blowing it. That's what obstacles do. Yeah. Obstacles get in your way. Yeah. And they bounce from place to place. They all, all over the place trying to derail you, trying to get you off course. But God's purpose is in place. His plan is perfect and it's in place. So everything that the enemy throws at you, it won't take you out. It might stumble you a little bit. It may cause you to be hindered a little bit, but it won't take you out. The scripture says that we can be transformed. The very world that we've been speaking of that operates differently from God, that cannot provide us with a purpose that God has already destined for us. When we live in that same world, in order for us to be, to be in the play, in the purpose of God, it is required of us to have a mental transformation. Mental transformation is going to require you to dig deep down. Get deep down in yourself. Get deep down in the spirit of God. In order for you to have have a mental transformation, you're going to have to reject some things that seem normal to you. In order for you to have a mental transformation, you're going to have to sit down with God. And you're going to have to map out some things that's been hindering you. You're going to have to map out some things that's been getting you off course. And when you have a mental transformation, you don't think the way the world thinks anymore. You don't operate the way the world operates anymore. Because when the mental change comes, you'll start thinking more like God and start thinking more on purpose. You'll start acting more like God and start acting more on purpose because as long as we are converting to the world, as long as we're acting like the world, we'll act differently than what God has planned for us to be. We'll act differently than the purpose that God has planned for us, but we got to remember that because of the purpose of God, he would not have created us if it wasn't for purpose in the first place. We would not exist if it wasn't for purpose in the first place. So a lot of us are in situations where God just said, I'm just waiting on your transformation. I'm just waiting for you to get your mind right. I'm just waiting for you to sit down and come to yourself and come to your senses and understand that the reason why you're still here is because I got purpose. If I didn't have a need for you, I would have let you go a long time ago. If I did not have a need for your very existence, if I did not have someone for you to witness to, if I didn't have someone that needed to hear your testimony. If I did not have someone who needed to connect with you, I would have let you go a long time ago. But because of your purpose, you're still here. Your very existence relies on the purpose that God has placed in you. See, we think we just meeting folk by chance. We think we just going and getting certain jobs by chance. You're at that job for a purpose. You're meeting people by chance. By purpose because God is connecting you with folk who need to hear your story and you need to hear their story. There's a purpose in the connection in the folk that you are meeting and the folk that you are coming in, in contact with. There's a purpose in you being in this service and not someone else's service. There's a purpose in you being a part of this ministry and not someone else's ministry because there's a purpose laid out and a plan laid out for this house. There's a plan laid out for these group of members. There's a plan laid out for this group of the kingdom and what we 
we have a plan and a purpose that's already laid out for God, if we're not fulfilling our purpose, then the kingdom is falling slack. Then the kingdom is losing out on some things. So it's up to us to have a transformation in our mind. God is waiting on us to come to ourselves and understand that he has a purpose and a plan in place. And once we come to ourselves, once we're transformed in our mind, then we can start living on purpose. Then we can start walking in purpose. Then we can begin to understand that some of the stuff that we're going through is because of the purpose and it's done on purpose. Because purpose that has come into your life is causing situations, causing circumstances to build you, to make you stronger, to make you tougher in God. Some things come about us and we wouldn't pray if we didn't have crisis in our life. Some of us wouldn't get some of the prayers out that we get through if we didn't have crisis coming in our life. Some of us pray, nah, lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. But when you got crisis going on, some of us fall on our face and we stay there until God begin to move. Some of us wouldn't fall at the altar if it went for crisis in our life. Some of us wouldn't fall at God's feet if it went for health issues, if it went for financial situations, if folk hadn't walked out on us, if folk hadn't talked about us, if it went for situations and circumstances that come in our life, some of us would never get as connected to God as we are now. But I need you to understand that through the transformation of your mind, this stuff was done on purpose and for purpose. The purpose of God has put us in situations that has caused us to hurt, that has caused us to have pain, but they're building us, they're molding us, they're shaping us. You ain't never went to a gym and worked out and got results if you ain't get sore, if you ain't hurt a little bit. You ain't never went nowhere and got no results running track and running, losing weight and doing all this other stuff. Got this bag wrapped around you and all this other kind of stuff. You ain't got no results if you ain't got no sweat in. But it costs. You got to put some stuff in. But I need you to understand this. Though it hurts, there's a purpose behind it. There's a plan behind it. God has a reason for your hurt. God has a reason for your situation. He has already mapped out the plan so that everything that you go through is still going to get us the purpose. Everything that we went through is still going to get us the purpose. So purpose might not get everything right, but I'm still on purpose. Might not cross every I, dot every T. But I'm still on purpose. Yeah. Might not speak the way everybody want me to speak, but I'm still on purpose. Might not be the friendly of facial expressions every now and then when somebody do me wrong, but I'm still on purpose. Yeah. I need you to understand that there's purpose in you. That there's perfection in the purpose. See, we feel like we're suffering. We feel like we're going through some things. And a lot of us want to ask God why. It's because of purpose. Because if there was no need for us, he would have taken us out a long time ago. If there was no need for us, we wouldn't be in very existence today. But because of the purpose and the plan of God, he has kept us this long. He has kept us to this day because there's purpose for you on this day. So when you walk out of these doors, there's still purpose on you. So when folks look at you a certain way, there's still purpose on you. When you're having good days, there's purpose. When you're having bad days, there's purpose. So I need you to get transformed in your mind and stop getting these pity parties and things ain't going your way. I need you to go ahead and get a mindset based on purpose so that when folk getting on your nerve, I understand this ain't nothing but purpose. I understand when my money ain't right, this ain't nothing but purpose. I understand when I have a great day at work, this is a part of my purpose. But when I show up the next day and everything falling apart, this still is a part of my purpose. When my body don't feel right, I need to understand that this is a part of my purpose. When my body feels great, I need to understand that this is a part of my purpose. When folk come to you and they trying to talk to you and trying to connect with you and you trying to figure out why is you talking to me? I don't even know you but this is a part of my purpose. Maybe I'm supposed to witness to you. Maybe I'm supposed to share something with you. Sometimes maybe you just need to shut up and listen to what they got to say. This may be a part of my purpose to receive something from somebody else because a lot of us talk so much that we don't get a chance to receive nothing. We don't get a chance to get fed spiritually because we always talking. We always trying to quote scripture and tell everybody about the goodness of Jesus. But sometimes you just need to be quiet and let God minister to you. Sometimes you just need to be quiet and let God send somebody to talk to you. Somebody to encourage you. Somebody to give you a word for the day. Sometimes you got to understand that purpose is in play. And even though I don't think it should be this way, even though it don't feel right, because purpose is in play, I just got to be still and allow God to do his thing. I just got to be still and allow God to be God. Because there's perfection in the purpose. When it's all said and done and you look back over your life, 
life. When you look back at all you had to go through and all that you went through, and you'll say, you know what? There was a purpose for this. There was a purpose for that. There was a reason I ran into that person. There was a reason I got into that situation because the purpose plan was already in play. So I need you to understand if you ain't got nothing else this morning, that God's purpose for you is perfect. That is perfection in his purpose. And everything that we deal with and everything that we go through, God is going to be perfect in his purpose. The very fact that he woke us up this morning means that his purpose is still in play. His plan is still in play because he saw fit to have us to be in existence this morning. He saw fit to have us to be in existence this week. So if God saw fit to wake us up this morning, we got to have a mindset of transformation to know that purpose is still working in us.